What's up everyone and welcome to another Armoured Warfare video. So I finally hit level 50 in the Warlords of the Wasteland Battle Path and you know what that means. Yes, I have finally unlocked the big prize vehicle of the tier 10 premium main battle tank, the Turkish Alte. This is a vehicle people have been wanting in the game actually for a really long time now. So it's no surprise that it was chosen to be the reward vehicle for this first Battle Path event. The Alte in the real world is actually a vehicle that is still only a prototype. It's not in service yet. However, it is due to go into production at some point in the near future. This means, honestly, this bit where I talk about the history of the vehicle is <laughs> run kind of rather short because apart from being shown to the public in 2011, it's entirely developed in Turkey with a bit of help from the developers of the K2 Black Panther Hyundai. It really doesn't have much more history than that. So let's dive into the Armored Warfare vehicle. And let's start with the thing that makes it go boom that 120mm smoothbore gun that can fire either armor piercing, high explosive anti-tank, or just high explosive. Its average damage per shot with AP though is one of the lowest of its tier, only 590. However, it makes up for that with a 5 round ready rack system, and that's able to put a round downrange every 3.5 seconds, and it will reload a shell into the ready rack every 7 seconds. If you fire that before that uh, 7 seconds is up, you cancel the reload on the next shell. So your reload if you jump the gun could actually be substantially more than that. 7, seven plus 6, what, 13 seconds potentially if you go too early. So yeah, what this ends up meaning is that its damage per minute when it's completely empty is actually the lowest of any tier 10. Yet when it's fully loaded, it has the highest of any tier 10 MBT. The supporting stats on the gun though aren't really that good. Well, apart from the incredible 16 degrees of gun depression, because it's sporting a hydro pneumatic suspension, and that allows the vehicle to ridge peak like crazy. The problem though is that it actually is the most inaccurate 120mm gun of its tier. It's actually almost as inaccurate as the XM1A3's 140mm gun. So that should give you an idea about just how inaccurate it is. This does mean though that trying to land accurate shots at longer range becomes way more difficult. Especially when you couple that with an aim time that's not only longer than most 120mm guns, it's actually more than all the 140mm guns do. And the gun at longer range does, basically it means it becomes a bit of a pig to handle, with you missing more shots than you really want to be. However, we come to where the Alte shines, which is mobility and utility. Mobility-wise, it's the slowest MBT of its tier. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but bear with me. It's only able to do 55 kilometers an hour at uh, top speed, but the acceleration's actually faster than that of the legendarily mobile Type 99A2. Only takes just over two seconds to 32 kilometers an hour. And this means you can speedily roll backwards and forwards when you ridge peak. But more than that, you are going to see in the replay, you can spot an area you can break through, you can engage at speed and bring that 5 round ready rack into the fight. And that really allows that amazing damage work, like output to work for you. However, you don't always get to use that mobility, some maps just aren't great for it. Well, the Alte is amazing for hanging back too. 20% camo, which is quite a bit higher than a lot of the other MBTs of its tier and 450 meters of view range. Yep, you heard that right, 450, uh, 450 meters. If you put increased vision range retrofits on the vehicle to bring, you can, you can bring it up to 485 meters. That is the same as a Sphinx on a main battle tank. That is absolutely insane. Now you can act either as a heavy scout, like really heavy scout, or you can hide yourself and spot for yourself do some real nasty damage, especially if you lay in wait towards the end of a game. Ready rack loaded, ready to catch some poor unaware person. Yeah, that's a very nasty combo. That view range is actually pretty disgusting on an MBT. I did not expect that whatsoever. Armor wise, the Alte is actually pretty strong. If we bring up the indicator, uh, the, the armor calculator, sorry, frontally, it's actually not bad at all. Against another Alte, you're only looking at your turret ring, well, basically the sort of weak spot under the turret here and your lower glacis. Like it has to be proper lower glacis as well. This one's 72%, so most of the time you'll get pen there. But even still, it's basically like 
anything below the upper glacis is potentially something you need to hide. And then obviously you've got this under the gun weak spot as well, which isn't too bad because you can sort of cover it a bit once you uh, like lower the gun. And since this is designed to be poking over a ridge, yeah, you're not going to see much of it whatsoever. So it's definitely not a particular big issue, I would say. Because if you think, I, I, for some reason I can't get the camera that high, which is unfortunate because it would actually be useful to be able to show the um, what it would be like as it was peaking a ridge. But basically that gun mount is going to cover that as like when you do your ridge peaking games. So, and to be honest, it's pretty much the same story for any of the tier 10s. Very, very few things are going to go through. Like the Black Eagle is going to have problems going through this bit, like. So it is proper just lower plate, and this one is a weak spot no matter what you do. Like, they're all going to go straight through there, apart from, from missiles. Missiles won't go through, but still. Like, ATDU. ATDU has a bit more of a problem going through there, 62%, but if it does, um, prepare for some hurt, because, you know, turret ring, loader, you, you... Yeah, it's not good if it goes through there. I don't think you can hit anything important down here. Oh, they can hit the driver. Well, that's about it, really. Eh, driver's not important. Don't worry about it. K21, look, you've got the, the Cornet. Cornet has really good missiles, so lower plate. Oh, that includes your ammo rag. Okay, good luck with that one. Um, Cornet sticks a missile through your lower plate. You could be saying, oh, it's the whole the whole lower plate. Oh, boy. That's all of your ammo rag. That's not good. Look at that. Straight through there, engine, turret ring, ammo rag, loader. Yeah, you don't want to be penned by the Cornet. Let's put it that way. Leo is going to go through pretty much anywhere down here. Can I hit the driver right there? Not going to have many problems getting through this bit at all. You've actually got 27% chance of being penned here. So if he accidentally misshoots, he could actually pen here. It's kind of unlikely, but it's possible. And obviously this same place. Merkava. So yeah, you can sort of see what I'm saying here. Sphinx can't get through at all. I think that might be with the auto cannons though. So not exactly surprising. T14. T15 can't get through with the AC, which is not surprising. Yeah, so T Type 99A2. I have this in my garage at the moment because I got it in a rental. So, as you can see, not many problems here. So, yeah, it's 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 not impervious from the front, but it's not too hard to hide either. Like, uh, provided you just hide this sort of lower, like, the lower bit here. Which, for the most part, you're going to do if, you, um, if you're ridge peaking. Like, obviously, if you're ridge peaking, this is not going to be visible at all. And that means that this is also going to be hidden. So rich, in rich peaking games, the Alte is ridiculously strong. Very, very, very strong vehicle when rich peaking. Um, I might have to provide feedback about being able to lift the vehicle up a bit more to uh, sort of show the show what it's going to be like when you do rich peaking games. But it really is absolutely brilliant at that. And the armor in, in general is just not bad. Like, you're going to bounce quite a bit. Imagine being shot at over distance. It's going to bounce like a big like majority of the shots. Um, just because, you know, it's not that easy to do. It's it's not that easy to hit those weak spots at a long distance. It's a fairly large target, but not uh, not big enough where it becomes a huge problem, I would say. There's that weak spot right in there, though. And as you can see, like I was saying, like... As, let's just do that to um, show basically what would happen if the gun mantlet comes down and you can't see it. So for the most part that is going to be covered and this does actually make it a very, very heavily armoured, well protected vehicle. So here we are, we're on Salzburg, we're on the northern spawn and we're going to head up towards the castle here and we're going to put the ulti into action. Now I normally sort of hold here and wait to see what's going on with the rest of my team. Because if no one else pushes up, this is a fantastic spot, especially if you're in the Alte, to defend. But anything with ridiculous gun depression is very, very strong here. Now I noticed that the Type and the T14 have gone to the right-hand side, where that other T14's just popped up. And I get a sneaky shot into him as he pulls back. But I know that left-hand arch is currently just completely unguarded. So I'm pretty much staying here, waiting for this. Waiting to see what pops up. And we bounce around from the Leo 2AX because we're in such a good spot. It's so hard for him to do anything useful. And we managed to sneak another one into the 2AX's lower front plate here. 
But backup has now arrived. We've got the BPE guys. We've got Escobar, another content creator on the right here in the Armata Titan. And we've got a bunch of guys on the left-hand side. So I decide that I'm going to pull to the right-hand side here. And I am eventually going to drop my suspension to try and um, try and cover my lower front weak spot a little bit by hiding behind Escobar. So there's a little bit of jankiness in the replay where there are certain things that are currently like warping around a lot. Um, there's a little bit of random bounciness. And it does actually look like, I, I've watched the uh, replay earlier and it does look like I hit Escobar a couple of times. But I actually, I don't. It's a very close call. Like here is one of them. Like, in the game, that is not what happened. Um, I just missed. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so... We've managed to get another one into the lower front plate of that Challenger. And we're looking... Sort of searching for another shot here. And there it is. Lower front plate again. So, as you can see, I've got my suspension down right now. And what I was trying to do was hide kind of near Escobar to kind of take advantage of his APS. Um to try and sort of deflect rounds for both of us, basically. So I noticed the left-hand side's having a few issues. I pop over here to try and see if I can assist in any way. Leo pushes forward, and uh, using the wreck for good cover. However, not good enough. Lower front plate of the Leo again. Absolutely no problems going through that whatsoever. Now, this isn't really what the Alte is for. It's not really a brawler at all, but it does do it very well if you can get it into a good spot. The, uh, yeah, Leo over-rotates there a little bit, and I managed to get a sneaky shot into the side. I try and pull back and accidentally crash into the, uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, thingy there, the Merkava. But, uh, that was a little bit unfortunate. I don't mean to destroy his shot. Um, but it was just one of those things. So I roll forward and notice there's an ATDU at the end there in a really good spot. There's nothing I can do about it. And I know there's something else at the end there as well. I think maybe there was an Armata um, over there. They're sort of overlapping right now. But there were definitely... Oh, it's a Leo. So I, I knew there were two over there. And now I'm paying attention to my map looking for what I'm doing. And I realize that a 152 and a an XM1 have come up behind us and are threatening to cut us off. Not sure where the uh, XM1 is going, however, between me and that um, type, we do... Oh, sorry, the Merkava, we do really well. I decide to go down the hill here, and then all of a sudden the type's like, Hello! And forces me off to the side. But this is pretty much what the um, Alte is good at. Getting around the side of things, putting good shots in. Armata swings his gun round whilst I'm stuck on the rock. And then we manage to take the Armata down. But as you can see, we did a lot of damage very, very quickly there. That's the advantage of having a ready rack system. Um, and that was fully fully loaded as well. That was the best thing about it. So I roll up here just in case. Um, I know I'm not really going to be able to do anything from here. Um, so I decide... Basically, the Sphinx at the back there has put two missiles into the back of the Leo. It's time to push. We need to go for it. So I try and go forward. I accidentally hit the, uh, the type. And push forward. So I'm hoping that that Leo there, not Leo, that challenger will turn to me. Unfortunately he didn't, he was too focused on the type. But I push forward to try and get this challenger that's fighting the ATDU and the Merkava. So we get like four shots in there. Lovely, that's what, two in the, nearly 2,000, or over 2,000 damage. And the type finishes him off as well. So the type's had a pretty damn good game. I've had a pretty damn good game so far. And there's only two left. There's only the PLO-1 and the T-14 Armata. But you've been able to see, like, the amount of damage this thing can put out. And the fact that the armor... Hey, again, type. This type was uh, a constant thorn in the side the entire game. Um, but, yeah, you can see the amount of damage this thing can put out in a very short amount of time. It's fantastic for, like, breakthrough actions, like, just then. Um, the type was happy to sit in that, like, archway and try and trade shots with the ATDU. Which, yeah, isn't a bad plan, but it doesn't get us moving forward. So I took the initiative and pushed through, and that's what the advantage of an autoloader is. Not an autoloader, the ready rack system is. That you can do that push, and you've got a huge amount... If you're fully loaded, that is a huge amount of firepower in a very, very short amount of time. The Alte is absolutely brilliant at it. Its armor is solid enough where you don't have to worry about things, and yeah, it's, it's a very, very solid machine. I am a big fan of it. Also, the missile coming in from the heavens right about now. 
I don't know where that came from, but it just came from the heavens, pretty much. And so that's the Arte. This is a fantastic vehicle with a lot of damage output. The gun is more than good enough to be able to put shots into weak spots, to go for those lower plates. But you have a huge amount of potential as well. The longer the battle goes on, the more it suits the ready rack type vehicles. As engagements become more and more spread out, you've got more time to load shots in between. And the more shots you've got loaded, the more your actual... Like, the, the DPM of this thing is absolutely monstrous when it is fully loaded. Not great when it's not. Um, in fact, this is a horrendous PvE vehicle. Because once you've got it all the way down to its lowest um, shots in the magazine, it is just... I don't know. It's the worst DPM out of any tier 10 vehicle. It is so, so bad. It's like 6 seconds per shot and, what, 550 damage? It's not good at all once you get it down to its lowest thing. And in PvE, you very, very rarely have any chance to get any more shots into the ready rack than the one um, that you're firing because it is just a, such a span of vehicles. So this is not a Pv PvE vehicle. PvP, however, as engagement spread out throughout the game, as you're manoeuvring around to get the remaining enemy vehicles, this thing gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And that means that, you know, you can take a hit, but you know that for the one shot that maybe on a martyr might put out, you're going to have three or four. And that means you can trade effectively and do some fantastic damage. I knew when I was making that push through the curve, through the, uh, through the curve, through the, um, the arch, that I was potentially going to take a hit from the Challenger ATDU as I went through there. And that was okay, because I had a fully loaded ready rack, and that meant that I, for that one shot, I was going to get pretty much my entire magazine off, and they were going to be dead, especially with the backup from the type. And that is the advantage of a vehicle like the Ulte, and it is brilliant at doing it. The maneuverability combined with that ready rack makes this thing a very, very fearsome tank. And, as I say, something that gets stronger the longer the match goes on. So that's pretty really much my review of the Ulte. A brilliant, brilliant vehicle. And one that I think is going to be very much worth the grind up to level 54. It is a hell of a grind. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. It's a huge, huge grind to get up there. Um, but at least once you do, you get a very, very good vehicle for it. So, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Alte. I will have more videos coming soon, and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.